Anne Boleyn. Second wife of Henry and mother of a future Queen Elizabeth. Anne Boleyn had three years as Queen Consort before Henry tired of her. Accused of adultery, incest and witchcraft, she faced an executioner's sword with her head held high on May 19, 1536. The executioner was reported to have said where is my sword, before striking the single blow necessary, apparently in an effort to ease Anne's anticipation by making her think she had a few moments more. Her ghost has been spotted by several different people in several different locations, Henry Castle, Blickling Hall, Saul Church, Marwell Hall, and perhaps most famously the Tower of London. Though she is most often seen just as she was alive, a beautiful woman in a beautiful gown, some sightings are a bit more upsetting. More unlucky individuals will see her as she was just after death, headless, often with the head tucked under one arm. It has become such an iconic image, it is often parodied in movies and television, and more elaborate Halloween costumes. One must not forget, however, what you would think if such a vision approached you in some dark corridor one night. Roman Senator Pliny the Younger, who died in AD 113, told a ghost tale, so haunting that it survives to this day. There was at Athens, a large and roomy house, which had a bad name, so that no one could live there. In the dead of the night, a noise, resembling the clashing of iron, was frequently heard, which, if you listened more attentively, sounded like the rattling of chains, disturbances, that led to the appearance of a specter, form of an old man, of extremely emaciated and squalid appearance, with a long beard and disheveled, hair, rattling the chains on his feet and hands. Needless to say, the house was abandoned and had to be rented out for a cheap price. When a philosopher named Athena Doris heard the story, he reportedly rented the house and confronted the ghost. The ghost appeared, and rattled around before vanishing. Athena Doris calmly marked the spot where the ghost vanished and, in the morning, ordered that the spot be dug up. This was accordingly done, and the skeleton of a man in chains was found there, for the body having lain a considerable time in the ground was putrefied and moldered away from the chains. After being given a proper burial, the ghost departed, and the house was haunted no more, according to Pliny's tale. Ghosts of the Stanley Hotel if you were staying at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, and turned to Channel 42 of your guest room television, you would be watching one of my all-time favorite movies, The Shining. Doesn't matter what time of day or night, or year for that matter, it is always on. That's not supernatural, of course merely a nod to their role as the inspiration for Stephen King's novel, employees report, hearing the commotion of a great party in the grand ballroom, when there is no one there. Children can be heard playing in the halls when there are no children at all, and many guests have reported seeing ghostly figures in their rooms at night, merely standing, watching. The fourth floor seems to be host to the most amount of activity, and there is one ghost in particular purportedly Lord Dunraven, the previous owner of the land the property was built on, who can be seen standing over the bed or looking out the window of room 407. He is widely blamed for any jewelry or valuables that have gone missing in the hotel over the years. K. 
Cape Morgan Hotel Del Coronado. The Hotel Del Coronado is a stunning Victorian beachfront resort hotel, in the very southern California city of Coronado, just south of San Diego. It was only four years open when Kate Morgan, a pretty young woman in her mid-twenties, checked into the hotel alone under the name, Lottie A. Bernard, from Detroit. Five days later, on November 29th, Kate was found dead on a hotel exterior staircase leading to the beach. She had a gunshot wound to the head, which the San Diego County coroner, later determined to be self-inflicted. Today, Kate's spirit seems to have remained at the Dell, where she tends to occupy her former guest room. But her beautiful vision and ghostly pranks can be experienced throughout the rambling resort and grounds. As described in the hotel published book, Beautiful Stranger, The Ghost of Kate Morgan and the Hotel Del Coronado, Kate is a relatively harmless ghost. She generally limits her activity to fleeting appearances and inexplicable antics. From that point on, strange phenomena have been reported at the hotel, strange noises, lights flickering on and off, television set that turns on and off by itself, and even the occasional ghostly woman, in Victorian garb wandering the halls. The Brown Lady Rainham Hall Rainham Hall in Norfolk, England, is home to the subject of one of the most famous ghost photos ever captured. The Brown Lady is named so because, she appears in a rich brocade brown dress. She is widely believed to be Lady Dorothy Walpole, sister of Sir Robert Walpole, who married Charles. 2nd Viscount Townshend in 1713. She died under mysterious circumstances in 1726, and sightings of her began shortly after. Though reports of sightings have waned dramatically, since the photo was taken in 1936, sightings before then had been reported by some fairly reputable sources. My favorite account is from a major loftus, who was staying at Rainham Hall in 1849. Retiring to bed one night, he and a friend named Hawkins observed a woman in brown brocade who vanished as Major Loftus approached her. Determined to confront the apparition, the next night he returned to she same spot and saw her again. He was horrified to see however, that when he looked into her face he saw only two black sockets where her eyes should have been. Unsettling to say the least.